Hi, my name is Heather, and today I'm going to show you how to create a coloring page in Canva. There are so many different ways to create a coloring page, so if you haven't seen my other coloring page videos, I'll have the links in the description for you. For this tutorial, we will be using multiple Canva elements to build a coloring page scene in Canva. This is great if you have a specific idea for a coloring page, but you aren't comfortable drawing it yourself. There are so many beautiful hand-drawn coloring page elements in Canva just waiting for you to use them in your design. First of all, when you create your project for your coloring page, you have two different options. If you're creating it as a standalone coloring page to be printed out, like for your own use or to sell as a PDF online, then you can do a standard 8.5 by 11 document. But if you're creating a whole coloring book, then you'll want to make sure you account for bleed. If you're using KDP or Ingram Spark, then that means you'll add 0.125 inches to the width of your page and 0.25 inches to the height. So if you're creating pages for an 8.5 by 11 book, then you'll want to make your project 8.625 by 11.25. I go over this more in my children's book videos and also my children's book in Canva course that I just launched, and I'll have links to all of those in the description of this video. For this tutorial, I'm going to make a standalone coloring page to print at home, so I'll make it 8.5 by 11. So I'm just going to go to create a design and I'll go to custom size and I'll change the units to inches and then I'm going to do eight and a half by 11 and I'll click create new design. Now we get to do the fun part, which is picking out the elements to put on our page. I usually find some really good elements by just searching for whatever it is I want, plus the word outline. So for example, let's do a Halloween coloring page. So I'll search for ghost outline. And then under graphics, I'll click see all. And there's all these cute ghosts to pick from. And I can just pick which one I want and drop it into my document. But it doesn't end there. So there are a lot of things that you need to know and be aware of if you want your coloring page to look professional and visually pleasing. The most important thing is that the illustration style that you pick for each of your elements is consistent, and that way it'll look like it was drawn by the same artist and it won't look like you threw a bunch of stuff together. It's going to look like one cohesive coloring page. The first thing that is really easy to notice is the stroke on the element. When you look at these two ghosts, you'll notice that the strokes on the one on the left are pointed at the ends and the one on the right, they are blunt. And you'll also notice that they get skinnier and kind of taper on the one on the left, and the one on the right, all of the strokes are the same width. This is something that if you were to have these two ghosts in the same coloring page, it's gonna look like a very inconsistent style and it's not gonna look cohesive. Here's another example down here on the right of one that has the variable width stroke. So you can see that it gets skinnier in some parts and thicker in other parts. The next thing you wanna look for is how realistic versus cartoony the elements are. And whatever you end up going with, keep that consistent throughout the design. If you look at the one all the way on the left, it really looks like it's a sheet. And so it's a little more realistic because this really could be like a person with a sheet on their head whereas the one in the middle is definitely a character. So he's definitely like a little creature that someone made up and not something realistic. Here are two different coffee cups, and you can see that the one on the left looks much more realistic than the one on the right. The one on the left is drawn more as a three-dimensional object, and you can see like the top of the lid and it curves. So the lid curves and the cup is curved, and so you can really see that it's three-dimensional. Whereas the one on the right is more cartoony, 
because it's not three dimensional and it's just like a very basic outline. So you wouldn't wanna have these two elements together in a design. You would either switch out the teacup with a more three dimensional looking teacup or switch out the cup and the straw with a flat looking cup and straw. Another thing I wanted to mention is the thickness of the stroke. So if you look at these two elements, they really look like they go together because they both have that variable width stroke and both of their strokes end in points and their strokes are the same width. However, what if we were to make the ghost bigger and then have the pumpkin smaller? Now, these aren't really gonna look great on the same coloring page because now they have different stroke widths. And I'm not saying that things can never have different stroke widths, but when it is, it needs to be done intentionally. So for example, if you're doing a coloring page and you have all of the main strokes thick and then all of the detail strokes thin, then that's gonna make sense and that's gonna look professional and cohesive. But if you have it like this, where some elements have a smaller stroke and then some have a bigger stroke, that is not gonna look cohesive at all. So what I would do if I really wanted to have a ghost this big and a pumpkin that small, is I would either need to look for a, a ghost with a thinner stroke or a pumpkin with a thicker stroke so that I could balance them out. So for example, I could go through here and find a ghost with a thinner outline, but I still wanna keep the style similar. So this one might be good because see he has a thinner outline. So when I make him bigger, now I can have his outline be about the same width as the pumpkin's outline. And now they will look much more cohesive. The next thing you wanna do is make sure that all of your elements are black because I do find that sometimes some of the elements that I get that are black aren't really black, they're like almost black. And even if it's hard to tell the difference on the screen when it's printed out, sometimes the difference will be very prominent and it'll look kind of funny. You can easily check if all your elements are black if you just click on one of them and then click on the color and under document colors, since this is all the colors in your document, if you have something other than black and white in this list, then you have an element that's that color. So this means we have a gray element on this page. So I would just click on each of the elements, just make it black. And then when I click away, and then I go back to the color, you'll see that now there's only black and white. One of the main things that you'll probably wanna do for your coloring page is stacking. In order to create a more interesting scene, you're gonna want some things in front of others and you can't just stack it by putting something in front of something else because there's gonna be an overlap. There are gonna be some of these outline elements that actually have a fill and you can have the fill set to white and then it'll be really easy to stack. But most of them are just going to be transparent. So in order to stack an element, let's say we wanna put the pumpkin in front of the ghost right here. The best way that I could find to do this is to draw white over the ghost. You could also cover it with a white shape as well, but I just find that since we're using such unique shapes here, that it ends up being a lot easier just to draw. So I'm gonna click on draw here, and I'm gonna use this marker, and I'm gonna change the color to white. And I'm basically going to kind of color in the pumpkin as best I can. It doesn't need to be perfect. As long as it's covering the ghost or wherever it needs to cover him, then that's gonna be good enough but it's also going to help because then we could always move him around later if we want to by having him colored in. So if you want to kind of go that extra step, you can color him in more. So I could also go to these edges too if I just want to do an extra good job with it. And then I'll show you what will happen after that. So now if I grab the pumpkin and I go to position, 
and layers. Then you'll see all of these white pieces here, which is what I colored. And there's the pumpkin. So I'm going to take the pumpkin and move him above all of these white pieces. And then I'm going to click on the pumpkin and hold down shift and then select the last white piece there. So I have the pumpkin and all of the white pieces. And then I'm going to click group. And so now these are one group and the pumpkin is filled in and I can pretty much stack him wherever I want in front of the ghost. And if you put him somewhere and then you kind of notice like, oh, we need to fill in the stem a little bit, or maybe there's like this little extra piece here, you can always just go back to draw and you can just fill in those extra little pieces. And you can change the size of your brush here too, so you can get some of these little details. And then you can just click on the pumpkin again and go back to position and just redo it. So then just pull him above the white pieces and then grab all of that and group it. So now he's going to be his own little piece that you can just move around in front of things. And when you're creating a coloring page, you do want to make sure that you have multiple elements coming together to create this design. And that's important because then you won't run into copyright issues. If you were to just put one thing in this design, like just the ghost, and save that as a coloring page, then you're not creating your own original design and you could get a copyright strike wherever you're posting that, whether it's KDP or Etsy or wherever you are selling this if you're not using it for personal use. Another thing that is really helpful is that if you go into your recently used and find those elements that you used in your design and click on the three dots, then you can try view collection if you have that option. And if you don't, you can view more by that same artist. And this way you can find elements that are that same style and that will help your page look more cohesive. So we have one reading a book here, which is super cute. And since all of the things in this collection are ghosts, we might also want to find other illustrations by that same artist that aren't ghosts. So let's click the three dots and do view more from the artist and click that. And under here, I'm going to search for outline and I'll click see all. And now these are all the different coloring page elements that this artist has made. They may not all be the same style, but it's more likely that these will be the same style rather than if you're just searching everything in Canva. Oh, that's cute, the little fall sweater. Now I'm just going to find some fall leaves to add to this. And I want to find ones that have a pretty thick outline, so that way when I make it smaller, it's not going to look weird. Also, if you decide to make a copy of something you already have, then you don't want to put it in the same orientation. So if I were to make a copy of this leaf and put it down here, this looks very repetitive. So what I would do for that is flip it and also rotate it. And this will make it look a little bit different. So now I'm just going to check all my colors. And I definitely have some grays here. So I'm just going to make sure all of my elements are black. And another thing that I want to check is just the edges of my design. So I have the sweater going off of the design, which is fine. And I have some elements that are in from the design. The one thing that I want to avoid is having elements all the way at the very edge of the design. This is probably okay if someone's printing it from home, but if it's gonna be part of a book and you're gonna print it with bleed, then you want it to be either in from the edge or coming off of the edge. You don't want it to be sitting right to the edge because that's going to get trimmed off and it's going to look like a mistake unless you have it either in all the way or cut like right through the middle. And if you're publishing on KDP, then you also can get errors. And I have a video explaining what bleed is and I'll link to that in the description. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill in my shapes so they can stack properly. So I'm going to go to draw and I'll make sure I have the white marker. 
I want the pumpkin to be all the way on the top, so I'll go ahead and fill that one in first. Then I'll go to position, and I'll move the pumpkin above all of that white that I filled in. And then I'm going to grab all of the white plus the pumpkin and group them. And now I can move on to the next element, which I'm going to fill in this ghost. And then go to position again, move him above the white pieces. And I'm going to group the ghost and the white pieces. And now I can fill in the other ghost. And again, I'll go to position, move that ghost above the white pieces, and group him plus the white pieces. So here is my completed coloring page. And when I'm ready to download it, I can just go to share, download, PDF print, and I'm going to flatten the PDF, and then I'll click download. And then you can print that PDF or sell it online. I hope this video was helpful. And if you create your own coloring page, you can share it in my Creativity Club on Facebook, where we encourage and support each other and help each other to reach our creative goals. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.